This tutorial will provide an overview of the ImagePro Premier 9.1 and higher interface. Premier has a tabbed interface. In the middle set of tabs are for images. Upon first launching ImagePro Premier, you'll notice a welcome screen. This welcome screen will provide you with the ability to open files, view PDF help, an in-product user's guide, and look for upgrade options. When new versions become available, this is the best place to check. All of your recent documents will be available here in this list, and very helpful video tutorials will be available that install with your product. If you have an internet connection, the Media Cybernetics Image Analysis Forums will post information here in this section. Click on the link to view some posts and even contribute. You'll notice here that I have a few images open in my workspace. When I click the tab, this image becomes the most active one. The active image will be on top and will allow you to adjust, process, and measure. To activate, simply click the tab to activate. If you'd like to find out more about the image, simply hover over the tab to view some information, such as the path it's located at and individual properties of this image. The same information can be available from the image strip. By simply hovering over the image in the image strip, you'll see this similar information. The image strip is a view of all your open images and by clicking on the image in the image strip, it will also activate the image. Each image that is active will have a data histogram that will be displayed for the image. It will display both the black level and white level for this image data. By moving these levels, you'll notice that you immediately have a change in the image itself. This will clip the data and cause a histogram stretch. If you'd like to reset, hit the green button that resets the display. This button is throughout the product and represents a reset. If you'd like, you can also hit the best fit to have the software calculate the best fitting histogram stretch for you. When an image is open in the workspace, you'll also notice that there is a special imaging tools tab available. This image tab will have information pertinent to the image that you have open. Different views are available for every type of image that you open. The default is going to be the image view, where you see a single plane at any given time. Other views are surface view, to see depth information based upon intensity, gallery view, most specifically for movies, to see them over time, slicer view, for three-dimensional images, and a 3D rendering for three-dimensional volumes. A bitmap option is available as well to see any image in its true nature with the intensity values per pixel displayed as an image. If you'd like to duplicate your image and create a clone as a specific view. Standard options for each image are available on the image tab, such as zoom, pan, local zoom, and lock. If we want to open a new image, we can simply go to the file tab, open, and click open image, open images as sequence to combine multiple images as a movie, or access our demo images. You can also drag images directly into the workspace from a Windows folder. Once I have multiple images open in my workspace, as I do here, I have a few options for how to view them. One option is to view side by side. I'll click on this tab and move the tab in order to go side by side. I'll hold down my left click and I'll drag it off of the tabbed view. You'll notice that a few arrows appear and allow me to place my cursor on those arrows so that I can place the image in the exact location I desire. I'll place this image next to these. My welcome screen's on top, but I'll click the other image so I can go side by side. This is a great way to view two images and do comparison. You'll also notice that if I want to zoom on an image, I click on it to activate, and then the simplest way is to use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Wherever I have my mouse on the image will be the focal point of my zoom. If I'd like to find other ways to zoom, I can come down to the bottom right hand of the workspace. I have multiple options for zoom settings or even best fit. And I also have a slider to help me zoom in and out. For each image that I want to look at, I may want to lock to a companion image. To do so, I'll select both images in the image strip, clicking the first one, holding down control, and then selecting the second one. Both highlight as now the active images. I'll come to my image tools and I see that I have a lock. 
I can also right click in the image strip to access the same tool. In this case, I'll be locking my pan and scroll, zoom, and the active frame. I'll click the lock, and now both images are locked at the same zoom and pan. As I move one, the other will move as well. To close an image, I simply need to go to the tab and choose the X for that image. I can also go to the File menu and choose Close. Since Image Pro Premiere is designed for quantitative measurement, calibration information is very important. On our Capture tab or the Home tab in offline versions, you'll notice optical characteristics and also calibration information side by side. These tools work in tandem to ensure that you have correct calibration information assigned with each image. To access your calibration information, choose the drop down and go to Spatial Calibration. This is only going to be used if the image that you're opening does not have calibration data already attached to the image. With this open, I can then select my calibration information from any available calibrations already created. If nothing has been created previously for the system, I can create one by either using the wizard, using our auto calibrate function, or I can draw a line as a quick calibration to a reference on the image. Once a calibration is assigned to the image, you'll notice that in the status bar, calibration information is associated. In this example, this image has only pixel values. We will choose a calibration from the spatial calibration options, which is in millimeters, and we'll hit apply with this checkbox. Now we notice that our status bar displays our calibrations in millimeters. The next step is typically to use any tools such as adjustments, processing, count size, and measurements to generate quantitative information about my image. Once I have this data, I can share it, view it, and automate it with the macro language available in ImagePro. If I like to save out any information that I've created, I have corresponding export options for each of my tables. If I want to send out information for my image, I have quick save options on my capture or home tab to send information to a folder pre-assigned. Quick save for analysis will save all image data with no overlays burned in. Everything will be raw. Quick save for publication will burn in my annotations and my measurements and save it as a JPEG. If I have a movie file open, the movie file will save with my quick save as an AVI movie with everything burned in as well. Standard save options are available as well. By simply going to my file menu, I can save the image or save as at any time. While using any tools in Image Pro Premiere, if I ever need to find out more information about the tool I'm using, it's important to understand that all tools come with super tooltips. And if the super tooltip does not say enough about the tool, find the gear. Gear means options. If you can't find the options next to the specific tool, be sure to go to the File tab and choose the main system options which has many different options available for the software. If you have any further questions about this or any other tools, please contact your media cybernetics reseller or local representative.